by inbreeding, um, we can and we are hoping to achieve a similar looking animal as the Kwaha. Yes, I think it's a good thing because as children, we want our generations to see this animal, to see how good it is, and it's an exit animal and it's um, indigenous to South Africa. So, us, as God created those animals, it's, it's up to us as human beings to accept them and to appreciate what God has created for us. So, I think it's good that the scientists are recreating this animal. I think it's very good. The, the one that started um, the Kwaha project or initiated it uh, mainly is uh, my former colleague and mentor, uh, Mr. Reinhold Rao, who passed away two years ago. Um, when he remounted the, uh, the Cape Kwaha and also the, the Kwaha in Mainz uh, Museum uh, in Germany, he found tissue uh, which he then collected and he sent it to two groups of American scientists who did DNA testing and they found that the quagga is actually a subspecies of the plains zebra. Therefore, the main gene pool still exists within the plains zebra. To try and read, read the quagga by um, selected? Well, um, my view is that it could be educational for the younger ones that haven't experienced um, the quagga. Um, Basically, in this museum, they just see the quagga as, a, as, a, as a, a model, as a statue, but to see it alive, I mean, it's uh, quite an experience. Once Reinhardt had established that, in fact, they had these quokka-type animals or these uh, subspecies that up in the uh, Itosha Pan area, together with the African National Parks, commonly known as sand parks, they transported those animals down to the Western Cape and entered into an agreement and started the Quokka Project Association. Um, that was nearly 20 years ago. It was in 1979, and um, when he first discovered these animals, and he then went to look for a selective breeding sites around the Western Cape, typically farmers, who had a, an enclosure that they could put up. And he, would then, he then started a selective breeding program of a, a, a quokka, a plain zebra, trying to breed out the, the continual striping, trying to breed back into the animal, the, um, or should I rather use the word revival rather than breeding back? Because understand, is, you cannot bring something back from extinction, but you can revive a subspecies. So it would be very unfair to say you have recreated the quagga. And there's also a danger. Uh, and the danger is that you could create the wrong impression to people and say that once an animal is extinct, don't worry, we can always recreate it. This is a special set of circumstances. There are several subspecies. What these people are doing is they're using one of the subspecies uh, and its lack of striping in certain individuals to try and produce an animal that looks similar in external appearance to the, the quokka.